yeah, kids are not going to be good at this right away. And even with a lot of practice, they still might not be that good at it. And that's one of the reasons why I think that, like in the example one they gave, you'll notice that the compelling question, the teacher created. So the students aren't, I mean, it talks about like, hey, with higher order students, maybe eventually they get around to helping you generate a compelling question. That's a great end goal. But really, they're generating more of the supporting type questions, right? So you let them ask a, a bazillion questions. Most of them are going to be terrible. A handful of them will be OK. And maybe a couple of them will be pretty good. And especially, th this is one of those opportunities you have to, I don't want to say lie to students. Of course, we don't do that. Um, like my seating chart that I tell them is random. <laughs> totally random. <laughs> but when it comes to those supporting questions, like you generated supporting questions. You know what you want them to be. But now you've got 30 kids. Between them, they generate 150 questions. There's a really good chance that at least a few of those are pretty close. Maybe just need a little bit of retouching to sound a lot like the questions that you knew you wanted to ask them anyway. And now you can say, these are the questions that you guys came up with. So let's look at those. Or you can actually let them come up with the questions and not have them pre -play. Now, of course, that's where our, personally I go, oh, that makes me really, really nervous because they might come up with great questions and then I can't find any resources and then I got to redo all my lessons and it's going to be a disaster. So you got to decide. Some people are much more free form and would, that would not stress them out. That would freak me out real bad. So I would be more likely to pretend they generated the list, but really just keep letting them ask questions until they got to the list I wanted anyway. <laughs> Whether you're comfortable being dishonest like that is totally up to you. But this is, this is one way of doing that where it gets them a chance to get involved in the question formulating process. Right? So you don't need them all to be good. Let's take a look at an example of that. Starting with a little description of how it works and then we'll look at an example from a classroom of it in practice.